up on the side side. Kilo Alpha 46, Pooh Bear Hamel by 297. Hey, we got you in, Robbie. Hello, welcome back. It's Fred in the Shed. I am up in the radio shack and another beginner's guide to CB video. And on this one, we'll be looking at RF amplifiers or commonly known as CB burners. Of course, you have to understand these are illegal to use in the UK. They output way too much power. You do like just like the 10 meter radios and HF radios. If you use one of these on CB, you are breaking the law. You do run a slight risk of being caught, of having your equipment confiscated, a slight risk of being prosecuted. Saying that, since I've been back on radio since 2014, I absolutely know of no one that uh, has been prosecuted for using amplifiers or anything like that. But just bear that in mind, you are going over to the dark side, you are taking a risk, you will be breaking the law. Before we even get into these, what I'm gonna say is, and as this is for people that are coming back to radio or new to radio, before you think about getting a linear amplifier or an RF amplifier, just make sure you've got everything sorted out. Make sure you've got the best outdoor antenna that you can afford. Because you're gonna be looking, say for one of these cheap RF amp amps here, you're gonna be looking at about 100 pounds by the time you buy a power supply unit. So for that 100 pounds, you could upgrade your antenna. If you haven't got an outdoor antenna, you could buy, say, just about a Serio Game Master or an Antron 99, or you could certainly get a silver rod and two two meter poles and some T and K brackets, and you could put it up on the side of your house. You could also upgrade your coax to mini eight, something like that. So always spend the money on the antenna first, because not only will you get the benefits of a greater range, you'll also get the same benefits of a greater receive. These burners will help your, it will increase your transmit power, it will help your range, but it does nothing to help your receive. So you, you don't want to be a crocodile station where you're putting out loads of power, people can hear you, but you can't hear them back. I'll just give you a quick example before we get too, in, too far into this. About three or four years ago, a guy left a comment on one of my videos and he said, oh Fred, thanks for the videos. Um, I've just recently got back into radio he said, oh, I can hear, hear some stations, but they can't hear me. So I've, I've gone and ordered a KL300 amplifier. That's a pretty big amplifier. That's um, sort of on sideband, two to 300 watts. So that's a pretty big one. So he said, Fred, could you just recommend a power supply unit? Well, straight away, you, you're probably 20 amps or more for that amplifier. But I was a bit intrigued. So I come back and I said, oh, okay, it's good that you're hearing people. Um, what antenna are you using? And he replied and he said, oh, I've got a mag mount, Fred. So I said, oh, okay, are you mobile then? He said, oh no, it's um, stuck on the radiator in my living room. I can hear people, but they can't hear me back. So this guy, can you believe, had an inside antenna, a mag mount, he just chucked it on the radiator, hadn't worried about his SWR. Surprisingly, he was hearing signals and he wanted to pump 300 watts for it. <laughs> He wanted to try and bang 300 watts RF power in his living room in a hope to get back to these people. And obviously, yeah, I, I recommended that he get an outside antenna. But that, that's kind of the mentality sometimes when people start up. Oh, I need more power. I need more power. No, no, you don't need more power. You need to sort out your antenna and get the best setup that you can. Let's look at some of the RF amplifiers that are on the market. I'm going to use examples from RM because I can just get the pictures easier. Zatagi so do similar amplifiers at similar prices. I, personally, if you ask me, I prefer Zatagi amplifiers, but I don't think there's really much in it. So kicking off right at the bottom of the scale for about 40 UK pounds, you get the RMKL35. It's a very, very small, compact little linear amplifier. I think the best thing about this one is that you can tide it away, especially maybe if you're going mobile and you're a little bit worried about getting stopped and searched or something, you could tuck this under the dashboard and no one would ever know that you're running it. Puts out about sort of 25 to 35 watts maximum, just on AM and FM it won't cope with sideband. You can put one to five watts into it, 
quite safely. So it's perfectly ideal for a standard 4 watt UK radio. It draws about 4 amps, so it's not too power hungry. Again, you might be able to connect that up to your auxiliary 12 volt socket if you're using it in the car. If you're going to use it at home, I would say probably aim for an 8 amp PSU power supply. Moving up from that is the KL60. This is a very similar amplifier, it's an AM FM, but this time it will work on sideband. It doesn't really cost a lot more. I think they generally go for about £45. It's slightly bigger, so it's not one that you can really tuck away. Again, with um, inputs, it's pretty much 1 to 5 watts. But it's got the same kind of output, really. 25 to maximum of 35 watts on AM FM. And on sideband, somewhere around about 50 to 70 watts sideband. That draws about 5 amps, so again, not too bad. Think about something like an 8 amp power supply. The next RM amplifier is the KL203, or the 203P. That's the one that I've got here. This is one of the most popular amplifiers that are used in the UK. They're good value, and they do work surprisingly well. The P part of it, the 203 and the 203P, 203p if you've got the pre it has a built-in preamp it's only about an extra five pounds more might be useful to you it does increase the volume of the incoming signals personally i found that those preamps they also boost all of the static and the qrm um, i've not really found them much good without any decent filtration so I wouldn't really recommend it, but it might be something you want to do for an extra fiver. So the 203, um, typically about 70 to 80 pounds UK price. Input wise, you can input from one watt, it says up to a maximum of 20 watts. Personally, I found, especially on sideband, I would stick to probably about a 10 watt input on one of these maximum. Um, if you put any more in, I find that the audio starts to get a little bit too compressed. Again, the outputs of all these amp is, is PEP power. It's not realistically the most power you're, you're going to get out of it. So for 1 to 20 watts input, um, AM, FM, you get about 65 to maybe 80 watts out of one of these, which is, you know, it's absolutely fine. Sideband, it does quite a bit more, actually. I, I find with this one I can get about 110, maximum of maybe 120, possibly 130 watts, which the... Zatagi, the B150 I've got here, by the way, which I think is obsolete now. I think it's the 153. It's a very similar package, a uh, very similar thing. These cost, to say, about 70 to 80 pounds. Now, as far as powering up one of these, they, they draw about 10 to 12 amps at maximum power. So add a PSU supply, think about 16 amps, something like that. So you've got that on top of the cost but I say a very 203 a very popular amplifier used on the 305 a lot not by me but used on the 305 if you're worried at all about upsetting your neighbors or causing interference and you want to run a little bit more power well one of the guys that watched the earlier beginner's guide video I think is a ham radio operator he made a good comment he said consider buying yourself a low pass filter it used to be called a tvi filter they're not expensive but you just put one of those in line and hopefully that should knock out any chance of one of these amps causing tvi or interference but uh, anyway let's move up to the big boys okay let's talk about the big boys then the big burners yeah the big george foreman grills putting lots of coal on your fire all of that personally i don't run big burners um as i say i can't see the point myself you're putting out loads and loads of power people can hear you but you can't hear them back but people do use these so let, let's go through it first one that stands out to mine that i've spoken to people on is the rmkl 300 costs about 180 pounds uk uh, fm you can put in between i think it's between 10 and 20 watts and that will give you about 120 up to a maximum of 150 watts on FM. So, yeah, quite quite a lot of power. Sideband, supposedly 200 to a maximum of 300 watts sideband power. Again, that's the 300's PEP power. But realistically, yeah, that could give you 200 watts on sideband. Takes a lot of power to power this uh, amp. Around 20 amps of power so you're probably talking to be safe something like 
a 24 amp power supply. Um, I personally would just go straight for a 30 amp supply just to be on the uh, on the safe side. I don't think there's much difference in the money. So just go straight in for a 30 amp supply. So yeah, you've got to allow for that. So if, for example, say 180 pounds purchase price, you might be talking another, what, 90 pounds, 90 pounds for a power supply unit. So 270 quid. Next amp that's popular, this replaced the K400, which was very popular. This is the K405. It costs about £240 in the UK. The one thing this has got going for it is it has a variable power output. Now, putting in, say, 10 to a maximum of around about 20 watts on FM and AM, you can turn the power down to 50 watts and all the way up to a maximum of PEP power of 200 watts. I don't know in reality whether you get that. If you've got one and you do get it, let me know in the comments. Sideband, low power is about 100 watts up to a maximum of 400 watts, and I'd probably think that's about 300 watts in real life terms. Takes quite a bit to power this again, 24 amps they say, so you're looking at a 30 amp supply. So your total cost probably gonna be about 330 pounds if you really want to run an amplifier such as this. Likewise, those bigger amplifiers, the Targi, they, they make their own range. Um, again, the top the top models have adjustable power output, which I think is a, a good thing. I prefer Satagi amplifiers myself. I don't think there's really anything in it. But it does get expensive, you can see that. The 405 with a separate power supply. Yeah, you're willing, you're sort of middling about the 350 pounds mark. Um, personally, and this is my own personal opinion, once you get up to that amount of money, £350, um, the step up to get a used HF radio, like this Alinko, this DX77 I've got here, it's not it's not much. I know really these have gone up through in lockdown, but if you could put another, say, £80, £90 towards it, you could certainly pick up a usable HF radio. They're much cleaner on their output. You'd less chance of causing interference. You can normally adjust the power output as well, say the 450 Yesu here, you can turn this right down to, I think it's about one watt, and it will go up to 100 watts if you need to use that. This this the output on this one is stepped. Um, so yeah, my personal opinion, other than running out and getting a very, very big power supply and then putting a cheap CB radio into it, maybe think about getting a HF radio. And then if you got that, if later on you, you know, you do, you do your ham ticket, you, you, you get to the uh, sort of intermediate level and the advanced level, then you've got the equipment already there. So you're half, you're half, you're halfway there. That's my, my own personal opinion. So I hope this is helpful. Bottom line is work on your antenna. Get your antenna sorted out, get it as high as you can, make sure that's all working, your coaxial cable's working before you start adding more power. And then watch out for interference that you might cause to your neighbours. So that's it for this one on the amplifier. I'm not quite sure what the next one's going to be yet. I'll let you know in due course. But as always, I hope this video has been helpful. I know a lot of you know a hell of a lot more about radio than me, so if you want to add something to the comments to help people in the future, these videos will be up on the channel for years and years to come. It's all very helpful for getting people back on radio. But that's it. There's the thumbs up from Fred. If this video has been helpful to you, please give me the thumbs back. I would appreciate it. And as always, take care, look after each other. Catch you on the next one. Oh,